It feels like we've got thumbnail. I thought, I hope so. Yeah, well, you do your intro. Uh, and we do an intro? Okay. I guess I'll, I'll just, uh, I'll appear later all right, on. Alright, all right. Lady, ladies, gentlemen, and all wonderful viewers of Room and Board, we're here to talk about one of my favorite games ever. Zomb Massive Darkness 2. Betrayal already! <laughs> so early in the video! Hi everybody, welcome to Room and Board. My name's Chris George. I'm Zach. And uh, we just finished a double derby of Zombicide and Massive Darkness 2. Um, ever since uh, I got Massive Darkness 2, we've been playing a lot of it, and I keep talking about how much more I like it than Zombicide and how Zach should throw away all of his Zombicide forever. And uh, so we just thought we would do, we'd take a day, we'd play both, play a scenario of both, and then just have a discussion, because we normally like talking about games and their differences and their similarities, and uh, why not talk about it with all of you as well? Right? Yeah. Yeah. Let's talk about the differences between Massive Darkness 2 and Zombicide. Right, because I think lots of people who might have gotten this. So the first thing we did when we played this game for the first time, Massive yeah. Darkness, is immediately I think we made eye contact, and my thought was... My investment in Zombicide and all of its expansions was a terrible, terrible waste. <laughs> I'm never going to get this to the table again. And I think Chris's thought was, I've beaten Zach. <laughs> I've, I have the better product. <laughs> na 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 boo boo. Victory is finally <laughs> mine! <laughs> um, yeah, because after, after playing Massive Darkness, and this will, this will act as sort of a review of both Zombicide and Massive Darkness 2 as well, I guess we can, we can describe both games yeah. a, a little bit to give those of you who are unfamiliar with both, uh, and then we'll, we'll go through the similarities and the differences mm -hmm. between them. Um, but the, there, there are quite a lot of similarities a ton. between the two. They're both come on games, mm -hmm. they're miniature heavy. They're set, they have like, you, it's a very hero focused, you play them with a group of players, it's cooperative, yep. it's sort of horde based. Dungeon mm -hmm. crawlers. Dungeon crawlers, their scenario, loosely a campaign sort of system. Uh, lots, lots of loot. Lots of loot. The tiles, the modular tiles board system, are very same, similar. About the same size. About the same size. You can use, I know with... Uh, earlier Zombicide, yep. there was an expansion that used all the Zombicide characters and tiles in Massive Darkness. Yeah, and that's that's also what some of the crossover. There's there is a Zombicide crossover pack that you can get for Massive Darkness for Massive too. Darkness, where you take all of your Zombicide characters and you they it gives them classes for Massive Darkness too. And I kind of want to get it just just for the just for the different abilities. Yeah, just to incorporate the cards. I don't even need to like have the characters. I mean, you know, if, we're, if I'm over here and that's usually who I be believe I will be playing Massive Darkness with. It's the little known you. story where Julius Caesar gets stabbed in the back and then they take all of his stuff. <laughs> My his beautifully painted minis. Um, yeah, so there's there are so many, so many similarities between mm -hmm. Massive Darkness 2 and Massive Darkness. Nope. And Zombicide. <laughs> I, there, there better be similarities between Massive Darkness and Massive Darkness 2. Yeah, to, to caveat, we have never played Massive Darkness. No. And our Zombicide experience generally resides with Black Plague and Green Horde. Which, if you ask any Zombicide player, they're the best Zombicides anyway. Or at least that's what I've been told, because that's really all I've been played. That's all, all I've, I've ever played, played either. Yeah. I played Black Plague, loved it, got Green Horde, yeah. loved it. Hunted down expansions for uh, years. Loved them all. Yeah. Um, I imagine I'd like other Zombicide. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But but this 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 one has rung my bells. Well, I think that's it. I think Zombicide is a great system. Um, and that's why there's been so many iterations on it. But uh, I was... When I hadn't played Zombicide in a while, and I think that you were saying this at the very beginning... I felt like Massive Darkness was just like a better iteration on that system, mm -hmm. but I now I think that there are two distinct, they are two distinct games, and I think there actually might be uh, a reason to have both in your collection as well. Maybe not room on your shelf to have both on your True. collection, <laughs> but but maybe a reason to have them both. Yeah, that they're different enough. So let's let's break down the. Why don't you give us a pitch of the what you do in Zombicide, right. and then I'll give a pitch of what we do in Massive Darkness. And then we can talk about what those actually felt about. like in play. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, Zombicide 
is a game where you and a group of players are going to build a, a sort of a modular map with tiles. Uh, usually it's a city or a town or sometimes it's a countryside. And zombies will be flooding into that, that map. Um, the zombies will come in in different numbers depending on how high the level your party is. So as you level up, more zombies will come in. So there's a balancing act between how quickly you level, because if you level faster, more zombies will come in, um, and trying to actually achieve your objectives. Um, usually it's very simple objectives. Go to these three places on the map, get to the exit. Go to these two places on the map, kill a boss. Um, there's a bunch of different scenarios um, it, for Zombicide. Uh, you can also just throw a random map selection together and do like a random sort of a custom uh, scenario for yourselves. And I feel like Come On has been really good at putting forward, I think almost every Friday, like a new Zombicide scenario as well. So there's so many on the internet that you can that you can get. And it's it's pretty simple because you can create your own fairly easily. Yeah, because, because it's basically the same, like a, a handful of different victory conditions in all the scenarios. Just, you can put a map together, pick some different zombies, some different abominations, some bosses yeah. uh, to throw against you, and, and it will feel very different almost every time you play it. Um, the basic sort of playing the game is you kill zombies, you level up, you kill zombies by throwing a ton of dice. If you can't throw enough dice to kill the zombies, you look for some better items to throw more dice. Um, and then you, you try to like manage your positioning on the board to not die. Yeah, um, It's pretty fast to teach. Uh, the turn time, like the individual turn to use one character's abilities, is pretty short. Um, yeah. I don't think... I think probably the length of the games is similar. Uh, I'd I'm, say Massive... Well, we're, we're more familiar with Zombicide, but I'd say Massive Darkness takes longer. Mm -hmm. There's definitely... Thi I don't yeah. want to get too much into my thoughts on Dar yeah, yeah, yeah. Darkness yet. But I, I think... I think probably the overall experience is about the same girth. Yeah, that's yeah. that's fair to say. So Massive Darkness is fairly similar. You will take on the role of uh, these light bringers, and each light bringer has a specific class. So you can be a berserker, a paladin, a druid, a shaman. It's a druid or a shaman, whatever they're called. Um, you know, they're, they deal with plants and elements. You know, do what are you gonna do? Actually, a very fun, fun class. They're all very fun classes, and they all feel very different. Um, and so you're going to take on a scenario and. These scenarios, again, it's, it's very similar. You're going to lay out the tiles. You're going to have these hordes of monsters swarming towards you, but how they're spawned is a little bit different. Uh, each monster kind of travels in its own group, whereas each zombie and zombicide activates on its own little activation. These monsters will move in a group, and they'll be strongest when you first meet them, and then you whittle them down. When there's one person left, they're easier to pick off. And so... Massive Darkness, you need to navigate these maps and get to these, again, similar objective points and complete the scenario, whatever the scenario is, and it's got a whole book of scenarios. And if you got any Kickstarter exclusive or expansions, they come with additional scenarios. Or you can, again, probably just create your own. It would be fairly easy to do, although I think potentially easier to do in Zombicide than Massive Darkness, but that could just be our own familiarity with the two. Yeah, maybe. I would also say I've also collected a lot of expansions for Zombicide, so I find it very easy to like chuck a couple bits from this expansion right. and this expansion and this core set, yeah. and this it feels completely different. I don't think I think there's a ton of stuff in Massive Darkness. Yeah. I don't think I think the modularity of Zombicide has benefited a great deal by the amount of Zombicide I have. That's fair. Yeah, yeah. I think if you just got the base game, I, I, I you may not have as modular an experience. Yeah. Because I know when you, you when you were setting it up today, you said, okay, which which zombies do we want in here, and which abominations, and you had a whole a yeah. whole slew of stuff. Um, yeah, and and basically you're just completing a scenario. You're going to need to position yourself around the board and throw dice at the monsters to take them out. As it's pitched, they sound pretty they similar. They sound very similar, but there are quite a lot of differences. And let's just get into the differences because mm -hmm. it's easy to talk about the similarities, but I think the differences are significant right. and, and were a lot more significant to me. And I'm really glad, and you and I were saying this beforehand, really glad that we played both back to back. Right. We played Zombicide first, and yep. then we played Massive Darkness. And in yep. the middle of playing Massive Darkness, I looked up at Chris and I was like, I'm really glad we played these back to back yeah. because my opinions and thoughts had changed 
quite significantly yeah. throughout. So in order to start our talk about Massive Darkness, yeah. what are the things that stand out to you that Massive Darkness does the best? Yeah, that's a, that's a great thing. Uh, what I love, love, love about Massive Darkness so much more than Zombicide are the classes. Number one, it's the classes. You get six classes in the base game, or you can add up to 10 or 11 if you get various expansions. Uh, there's, a, there's an 11th class that we don't have. It is the, it is the Druids. I think it's the shaman in here, uh, and so the druids, they're able to shape into, like, beast form. So they turn into beasts and uh, such. I know. I'll Chris, we can't do a full review anymore. I'll probably have to go get it. Okay. At some point, but it won't fit into my storage <laughs> solution, so oh, it's I can cut. teach you all kinds of stuff about fitting too many expansions in a box. Um, um, it, yeah, so the classes in Massive Darkness, to me, are awesome. And it's great because we've, we've now seen all of them. We've seen all ten. We've played with all ten. And... Um, like I haven't played with all 10, but like together, together we've seen all of them and they're so much fun. And there's not a single class in Massive Darkness where I don't think gets to do something cool on their turn. And it's, it doesn't, do, it's not just that like, oh, this is a cool idea or these feel kind of different. Each class has completely different mechanics, yeah. bespoke boards, special cards, special tokens. Yeah. Um, every game we've played, someone has sat down with a little booklet and spent 15 minutes reading about the, like, the completely different way each yeah. class plays. Um, and I agree with you, that is an amazing part of Massive yeah. Darkness. I sat down today and played the Tinkerer, and I took, I, I probably sat and read my rules longer than anyone else today. Yeah, well, Tinkerer is, is a lot more complex mm -hmm. than, it's probably one of the most complex. But I had, I had so much fun exploring all of these different mechanics, it made it feel like a complete a different game yeah compared to the le the couple other times i've played massive darkness it is impressive yeah and even even the previous one he, you were the necromancer mm -hmm. and you were like oh i think the tinker is gonna feel a bit like the necromancer did not yeah that's what i was gonna did add. not it felt so cool. unique cool and like i i thought um, uh, at first oh i'm gonna be controlling robots instead of zombies no it felt so good i i this would be an entire video of me trying to explain the differences between <laughs> Necromancer and Tinkerer and all the other classes. Yeah. And that is that is definitely one of the big good parts about Massive Darkness. And I also think it's a hint at part of the, the weaknesses of Massive Darkness as well. Yeah, yeah, fair. I I I believe I agree with you as well. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's 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 not a bad thing at all, but I was just talking about how everyone goes and reads their rules for their class. That is something you're going to have to do in Massive Darkness that you never have to do with Zombicide. In Zombicide, your, your character starts with one special keyword, and it makes all the characters feel a little different. They all have a special rule. Mm -hmm. But reviewing those special rules takes all of five minutes. Yeah. And while all the, cla all the characters in Zombicide feel a little special, but not mechanically different, um, the, the, the different speeds of pickup of, of, of play... Are, are I think one of the one of the big differences there. Yeah, definitely. Um, it's it, it it is the reason why I do love Massive Darkness and and have really been enjoying it and I'm excited to delve into it more and to play the classes that you have because I've gotten to witness them but I haven't gotten to fully experience them. So Zach was like, oh yeah, I just make these bombs over here and oh, I'm gonna put this uh, exosuit armor on now and and then I was like, oh yeah, I'm just gonna like punch myself in the face. I was playing the Berserker. I was like, yeah, I'm just gonna punch myself in the face and and they get punched too. And and we just you just kind of have to trust that the other player is is doing what they're supposed to. And if they, you know, if they make a mistake, who cares? Because there's there's too much to micromanage everybody at the table, especially. And we've only played Massive Darkness at a lower player count. It can play up to six. We've only played at max three. We played at two and three. Mm -hmm. And because of the amount of downtime, not downtime, but the amount of upkeep and the amount of sort of fiddly nature with the tokens back and forth, mm -hmm. I don't know if I would play it with more than three or if I'd enjoy it as much with more than three. Right. I think I have two things to say. One yeah. is with the, the, the complexity of all the characters in Massive Darkness, I think it solves a problem that comes up in co-op games sometimes where there's a player at the table who's running the game for, sure. for everybody and it's like, oh, you should do this and you should do this. It's too complicated in Massive Darkness, at least as starting out players, Yeah, I would, for, for some person to micromanage everybody else at the team because everybody's got so many unique mechanics. You couldn't be managing all my, my gadgets and gizmos yeah. and bombs. I couldn't have been managing your, managing your, 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 uh, your Berserker stuff. I think that's a little help. It probably 
that goes away if you if you're very familiar with the game. Um, yeah, but, but the other th- I, yeah, I think if you tried hard enough and if you were an alpha player enough, you yeah. could you could micromanage. Right. I, I, yeah. It might. It might. It's no Spirit <laughs> Island in terms of in terms of the amount of things you have to keep track right. of, but it is enough to mm-hmm. make it just like yeah, I trust you're doing what you're doing, and I'm going to do what I do. Right. right. Yeah. It, it does make for exciting moments when someone like runs down a corridor and you're like, I don't think you should be doing that, and you're like, trust yeah. me. Yeah. You're like, oh yeah, I can't okay, do. And I watch Chris just yeah. destroy a swath of guys I didn't think was possible. And I'm like, it's a really good feeling. Yeah. Or when you when you see the tinkerer run down down a, a flight of uh, of stairs and you're and you're like, what are you doing? And he goes, trust me. And he throws some bombs and they just. Poof. <laughs> or he puts on some armor he's so tanked up and he goes to attack and he just does no damage everybody <laughs> yeah I, I i i i my my embers blew out to make your your flame blow grow hotter um <laughs> no i, I mean but we, hey we won the scenario we did, we, we did. I, and everybody felt really powerful by the end too and doing their own stuff mm-hmm. as well uh it's not i don't feel like you ever get into a situation, at least we haven't yet, um, where you where a character feels like significantly underpowered to everyone else. And because it is a co-op game, I've loved playing characters where I buff everyone up. I, I really enjoy being the paladin mm-hmm. where I got to just create zones where everybody else would get strength from. <laughs> I was like, yeah, go in there. Ha, I did something. Now you go there. And I just kept on like juggling those around the board. Um, mm-hmm. I think the other thing I wanted to say was mm-hmm. all the complexity we're talking about uh, with the character classes. I think that all the good and the bad things about that being a complex, interesting, super cool, very deep system can be extrapolated to every part of Massive Darkness, from the setup to the the, the upkeep to the the just managing the number of different like models and miniatures. Um, it, it, I think a lot of things in the game are very deep and very interesting, and they come sometimes at a cost of of, of time. time and yeah. like just like thought processing, right? Yeah. Where in a in a turn of, of Zombicide, you might be like, I have three actions. I'm going to move here, move here, attack once. My turn is done. Yeah. Um, in Massive Darkness, you might want to move here, move here, move here, and attack once, but it it's going to take five minutes for you to do that. Yeah. Um, and you're going to be talking through it, and you're going to be like, oh, well, I have three different ways to move here, move here, move here, and attack once. Yeah. What is best for everyone else at the table? What's going to happen next turn? There's there's more things that you might be considering, and while all of those things are juicy and delicious, and you want to bite them, and you want to, like, taste every little morsel of deliciousness the game is serving up to you on, like, a beautifully wrought silver platter. Yeah. Um, sometimes it's going to take longer than, uh, or feel like it takes longer. I said earlier, I don't think these games are a different length. I think you're wrong. I, 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 th- I was pretty sure that they were about the same length and this one just felt like there was more, uh, time spent in, in thought or in player turns going around a little slower. Um, I also think we have played this with two, and we have played this with three tonight. That's, that's true. That's right? fair. The extra player adds. Mm-hmm. I think you're right. And I, I would also just add that, like, in Zombicide, often you, you, you play with multiple different characters. Like, we today played a game, and we each had three characters we managed. Because you I, always play with six characters. You always play with six yeah. characters base. Um, and I think us taking the turns of all three of our characters in Zombicide... Was about little, the same time as one of probably our about about yeah. the same amount of time as one of our characters from Massive Darkness, but it feels so much snappier in Zombicide, and it feels not sluggish, but it it feels less responsive perhaps in Massive Darkness. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I think I, I think one of the reasons for for that is this is a lot not a lot but but a little bit more tactical mm-hmm. than Zombicide. I. I described this, or I was hoping for this to be Diablo, the board game, but Diablo is very much a hack and slash where you're mowing your way through enemies, and here the enemies are so strong at the beginning, you can't put yourself in harm's way, they can easily just, one of them can wipe you out. Whereas if you're in Zombicide, you can you can kind of put yourself in harm's way a little bit mm-hmm. with the zombies, but it, it's, it's, it's a lot easier to just like mow down 
yeah. hordes of hordes of zombies, mm-hmm. and the, and the game pushes you mm-hmm. pushes you for that. There right? are, there are times in Zombicide where you might be standing on a street, and half the miniatures in the box will be on that street, yeah. moving towards you, and you can confidently wade through them and like I'll kill ten guys in this square and yeah. two, two like five guys in this square and you're you're gonna kill the other twenty right Chris good yeah um, <laughs> well, that, that might be an exaggeration but but it feels that way it does right well, that's the, that's the sense that it does mm-hmm. provide right whereas here it is these these almost it doesn't even feel like mobs of monsters it really does for this it feels like like a an evil Power Ranger and you've got to chop off. But each Power Ranger one at a time until you until you destroy it utter, uh, entirely. That's because you have mm-hmm. to like e- each time each monster has a health amount, but they always travel in the same space. So you're like, okay, I dealt three damage, and then one of their limbs falls off, and then they're they're weaker, so they can't attack you as much, mm-hmm. and it makes it easier for you to finish them off, right? And and pick up the items that they drop. Yeah, I think our camera is gonna die. Oh. I can see it flashing. So oh. I need to run home and okay. get another battery. All right. And that's great because I didn't know what to say. Okay. Well, you, you can think about it. We can think about it. Was, I, I knew your battery was kind of dying yeah. and I was trying to speed up it. a little I'm bit. I'm tensing it. Oh, you better, do you have to stop it so it's safe what we've done? No, no, no. If it dies, it, it's, it's not on me before a bunch, but people of YouTube. <laughs> I'm going to cut this part. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe that'll be the uh, the opening tag. <laughs> We're back. Our our battery died. I ran home and got another one. I was here alone with the camera. I spoke to you for an hour and a half, and <laughs> I realize now that none of that footage was saved. <laughs> the uh, the Zach files. <laughs> so we talked about, or at least I talked about, my favorite part about Massive Darkness. I feel like that's your favorite part too, though. I think that's the part that stands out the most immediately yeah. when you play. I think the thing I enjoyed, especially when we're thinking about comparing these two, mm-hmm. yeah. the thing I, I think that stands out is a thing that I think at first made me like really like Massive Darkness and think it might be a zombicide killer, yeah. was the way it deals with the items. Mm. Um, right. So yeah, yeah, talk about that. It really stands out in comparison to Zombicide, but it really was fun when we first played it as well. Um, throughout the game Massive Narcos, you're going to be collecting items, and there's different rarity levels. And the first thing that this does, and the, you get higher level loot as the game goes on, yeah. and higher level monsters have higher level loot. And so what this does is, immediately, it, it, it gives a shape to the game that Zombicide doesn't. Because all the loot yeah. is random in Zombicide. So you're going to get a lot of very useful early game items in the early game. And as the game gets harder, you're going to get the items that you need, or that you want when you get yeah. items more often that are the mid-level items. And by the end of the game, you're getting the top tier items that you want to be getting at the end when you need them the most. Yeah. Um, as opposed to in Zombicide where you'll get uh, an end game item in your first search and you'll never need to search again. Yeah. Or you'll get, you'll pull nothing but beef jerky and, and torches <laughs> for the entire game. And like tonight I had a character who had a torch and in her backpack was another torch. Yeah. And in her hand was a scroll that made other people move. And she couldn't fight a single zombie to save her life because she never found a weapon. Yeah. Um, uh, and so that's a huge difference right off the bat between Zombicide and, and Massive Darkness. But it's really fun. Like it's a it's a no brainer sort of like mechanic. Like yeah, there's a there's a shape and a progression to your game and. Items are a huge part of that, and there's a shape and progression to the way you get your items. Yeah. That off the top, great. Yeah. Second, there comes a point where, like, you're killing guys, and they're exploding with items, and you've had all these early game items you don't need anymore, and you can do stuff with them. Yeah. You can bring them to, to anvils and turn them to higher level items. Uh, I played the Tinker today, who specifically could just throw away items to do stuff with them. Um... And even if you're not the Tinker, other characters, they have, you you can do things and find a use for the items that you've gotten throughout the game. And so you might have this stack of items you've collected that are now useless to you, yeah, but, are, but they're not. they still have a use. They're still interesting. They're still exciting. They're still mechanically like yeah. influential. In Zombicide, there comes a point where either you're going to search and you'll have more items than you can do anything with and most of them will be... Or even carry, because or carry. you have a limited backpack, yeah. right? And you'll, they'll be completely uninteresting, 
because you'll have the better stuff on you and you can search and it's a little exciting to like, oh, what am I going to get this time? But it almost invariably it's like another dagger. I have the earthquake hammer. I don't need it. Yeah. Um, and that just sort of feels a little sad, especially because there's like quite a large deck of items. Yeah. And you don't know what you're going to pull. You might need to... <clears throat> Excuse me, I just I just ate a Takis, and there are spicy little chips, and I thought it was fine because it wasn't that spicy, but its crumbs are all up in my everything. I'm gonna drink some water. Yeah, okay. Um, but but that's that's th those are two really really valid points. You you were saying that you draw the item and and it's useless to you, and you, there was in our game specifically. There was a troll abomination that came up. I think this is what you're about to say. Mm. The troll abomination came up, and the only way to kill the troll is through dragon bile. So we had the torch to light the dragon bile on fire, and we had the other torch, you know, just to keep ourselves warm. But we had to search through half of this deck <laughs> in the hopes of being able to kill this troll. And especially for the scenario that we were playing, mm -hmm. it was just annoying because then we just had to wait for the troll to just walk away. And it was basically like we were wasting three or four turns just trying to wait for this troll to get out of our way because we had no way of killing him and we had no way of getting that item or accelerating even the search for the items because mm -hmm. in, in Massive Darkness, you even see the spots on the board that produce items. So if you need something, you can like run towards it. In Zombicide, you can search a room wherever you are, but you can only search once for each character's turn. Mm -hmm. uh, and so you're like, okay, I did my search. Um, I guess I just stand here and make, bang on the wall to make some noise to draw the zombies away. I, I think that's that's huge and something that I would have forgotten to talk about, but remembered feeling. Mm -hmm. I, I said it to you a bunch of times in yeah. the zombies. I was like, Why, where's the forge? Like, what can I do with these garbage items? Because mm -hmm. my, my characters couldn't... There's a barrier in Zombicide with the units because you have the fatties that you need two damage to kill outright. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have a weapon that kills them, then you just run. And in some ways, I guess that's thematic, right? Because sometimes there are these giant zombies, you know, sometimes in life when you're fighting off zombies, you know, just on a day-to-day, -day, uh, there are these giant <laughs> zombies <laughs> that you gotta, you gotta say, no, thank you, sir. I'm gonna take a pass this time. I don't feel up to it today. <laughs> I mean, I, I've... I've... I've worked plenty in the service industry. <laughs> Zombies are out there, and they're real. <laughs> but yeah, I think I, I think that's that's something to really highlight about Massive Darkness, and and it makes it a lot a lot more interesting in terms of that arc, and mm -hmm. you get to you get that feeling of being really strong at the end of the the game versus at the beginning, and and I think again it comes with that trade off. It's the same with the the unique classes and the unique skills that you get with those classes because I don't even think we we mentioned that every time you level up you get a new unique skill that you get to choose from like a stack of skills and in Zombicide you get a choice between one of two things generally and that's only when you reach like the third tier do you even get that choice mm -hmm. right so it's it's really nice to have and it's very fun to be able to choose even which way you're going to build your character, build your unique class, which already feels unique, which of these like directions you're going to take them. Mm -hmm. It's still really fun to do uh, in, in Massive Darkness, but it always adds, it adds that time and it adds that upkeep factor. And that's why, that's why I said to you earlier, when you thought they were comparable, I was like, no, Massive Darkness <laughs> is long. It feels like by the end of Massive Darkness, I'm, I'm I'm done with Zombicide. It's like I can play one, and and I'm like, okay, I'm ready to play the next game. I yeah. play Massive Darkness. I'm like, okay, I'm going home. <laughs> every time, every time we've played Massive Darkness, yeah. even if on a usual night we would have gamed for longer, at the end of the game of Massive Darkness, it's felt yeah. done. Like people are a little bit mentally exhausted, a little bit like physically exhausted, a little bit. Like, I was yeah. talking to you at the end of the game. Yeah. I was like, oh. I, my eyes are feeling heavy. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't feel that right now. But at the end of the Massive Darkness game, I had felt I had felt like I had gone for a little bit of a run, right? Like a, just like a, a, a board game. A, it yeah. was a, I was used in a board game way. Um, which is great. Yeah, it's good. Which is great. Like you I, I like feeling that way, but it, mm -hmm. it does it does kind of take a lot more energy yeah. too. And uh, on as I kept cuz we're we're comparing the two. Mm -hmm. Finished the game of Zombicide, I came out of that with enough energy. I could have, you could have said, like, let's set it up again, Zach. And I would have, like, without without breaking yeah. a sweat, 
right? Without even considering, right? And maybe it's because it asks a little bit less, or maybe it just asks more specifically. <laughs> I think it's I think it's a combo mm -hmm. because I think it's a combo of it felt so foreign to me returning to Zombicide where your movement is just one of your actions is one move, one space, mm -hmm. right? Massive Darkness, your movement is move three. And that already changes the entire yeah, I, 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 like structure of how much you can accomplish. And I think that is, that is again, symptomatic of like everything in Massive Darkness. As just like a very simple example, in Zombicide, your starting character has three actions. You can move, and that means you move one spot. You can attack, which means you attack something you can attack. Or you search, which means you search for items in the square you are in. Yeah. In Massive Darkness, you have three actions. You can move, which means you move three times, or you open a door, or you, you can pick open up a something. chest, or you can pick up a chest. Or you can interact with a forge. You can use items. Yeah. You have, each character has other different things they can use movement points for. And, oh wait, that's just one of its abilities, right? Yeah. So, while you could say, in Zombicide, you have three actions, and you could move, move, move. And in Massive Darkness, you have three actions, you could move, move, move. Each of those movements in Massive Darkness is like... It's three decisions yeah. containing three decisions. Yeah. Right? So there's... Move, open a door, pick up some loot, craft it at the anvil, move, move, move. You've done one action pick now. Pick up one thing. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right? Um, there, is, there is sort of like a density of decisions that are being made. Yeah. Um, which, which, which comes with a, a toll, a cost. Yeah. Yeah. And, I, yeah. and so I think that's, that's what, what contributes to the energy level. And also, I do find... I used to think Zombicide was a bit fiddly because you're constantly taking the zombies out and then you're moving them and then you're killing them and you're putting them back, right? You're taking them off the board. But I think this is triple, um, you know, it's way, way more fiddly because every time you pull out a, out a monster, they have to have an individual item attached to them. And then they get another random token, which you pull out of a bag, which is important that you do pull it out of the bag because the bag gets built in different ways in between turns. And each minion has a different special ability, which yeah. interacts differently with... So you got to check and say, okay, they rolled that. Okay, that's a combat ability. That's a defense ability. There's just a lot more to keep track of mm -hmm. and to manage. And it's all really fun. Right. And it's all super thematic. Every yeah. time you're doing a thing and you're like, you're never, you're never executing a mechanic and thinking, well, this is mechanic, a mechanic, but it's not representative of the fiction. Everything is so representative of, of the fiction. Yeah. Um, and so that helps you, that helps you like follow what's going on when it might be taking a while. That helps you uh understand things maybe a little bit more implicitly when it, mechanically there's just a lot of complex interactions going on so that's all really good but there are complex interactions going on yeah yeah um so okay zach uh because we've talked about a lot well we've talked about the differences between yeah. the two but what do you like more about zombicide than you do massive darkness i think the the zombie theme helps zombicide immensely yeah um i think the fact that the like i have you i don't know if you've seen on the corner i've got three big boxes here and they're full of so many zombies um painted extraordinarily well oh, thank you but one of the great things about zombicide is every turn you're putting handfuls of zombies on the board and they're of different kinds and they have different abilities and things like that and it never feels overwhelming but it looks overwhelming mm. Right, there's it never feels overwhelming as the player, as the player, right? Like as outside the game, right? Right. No one, yeah. I've never, I've never played Zombicide with anyone, and they'd be like, "Oh, well, what's what's a normal zombie do? Oh, what's the fat zombie do? Yeah. Oh, what's the fast zombie do? Yeah. They're they're just zombies. They're bags of hit points, and they're yeah. just sort of delightfully simple in that way. And you get the you get the interesting like zombie bosses, the abominations coming on, and they have they have some fiddly rules, and there's I have like a dozen of them, so. That gets adds a little bit of a complication, but mm -hmm. generally there is a wave of fifty zombies coming towards you, and you you understand that wave of zombies like you understand every zombie movie you've ever seen, right? There there's no there's no mystery in them. Their hills. There's get get your <laughs> shovel and start thwacking the zombies because they ain't stopping till we get home. <laughs> yeah, that's exact. I mean, how can you say it better? Than right, that, you can't. Right? <laughs> Um, and I, I think that's, that's a, I think that's like unironically like yep. a beautiful meld of very simple mechanics, very simple to understand bad guys, 
you have a lot of them, you have a lot of tools to deal with them. And, and it's very, very clean that way. Mm -hmm. I think, um, as, as, as putting it into opposition with Massive Darkness, yeah. you get these little groups of, of bad guys in Massive Darkness that don't feel like a group. They feel like a single entity. Yeah. Um, you put a bunch of them on the board and they have like these crazy sculpts, but they don't feel like they are as unique as they look. You'll put like three different units on the board yeah. that are all wild. There's unicorns over there and there's the zombies coming towards you over here and there's gargoyles coming towards you from this side. But while they're all mechanically different and the game wants you to feel differently about all of them, yeah. they they are secretly so samey. Yeah. Um, which is a wonderful thing. You you got all those extra Kickstarter cards for sure, I, which which I, give you so much mechanical yeah. like depth and, and like and if, uh, variability. But there I, is zero interest. I have zero interest in getting additional sculpts mm -hmm. to match up with the picture on the card because we look, we take the card, we look at it, and we say, ah, it kind of looks like this one, and then we put those out. Right, and it's. So much, so much easier, and and it doesn't make a difference. It doesn't impact the theme whatsoever because they do feel right. like you're saying, like and, and, the and, same. And this is it's a little hill in Massive Darkness that it wants you to climb every time a bad guy comes onto the board. That I don't know if completely pays off, pays it pays its own rent. But every time you draw a card, it's like, oh, how many zombies? Twelve. How many zombies? <laughs> Five. How many zombies? Three. But in this, it's always like, how many? What are they again? Uh, yeah, it's which level, which what level yeah. are they at? Oh, yeah. what level are they? Are troglodytes? What's troglodytes yeah. mean? What do they look like? What are they? So they're just like these other ones. I think I think it, it's again a sign. There's tons of depth in Massive Darkness, but um, and the mechanics and and de deciding how you attack each one of those those sort of bosses mm -hmm. or mobs uh, feels different and is is a fun calculation to do. I think yeah I, yeah I, I think you're right. Yeah, I think that would be that would be my. Um, my number one about about mm -hmm. Zombicide Two is that it gives you that sort of hack and slash. Yeah, you just want to mow down zombies. I also think like just another like thing I like about Zombicide, you're chucking dice and they're just dice, like they're just six sided dice with six pips on them. And when you get your result, you know exactly what they mean. In Massive Darkness, you're building you build a dice pool when you attack, which includes your enemy's dice. And you when the enemies attack you, you build a dice pool out of their dice and your defensive dice. And so you're always sort of figuring out what the dice pool is, and it's always changing, and you're using four or five different colored dice with different symbols on them. And it's super interesting and super deep, and there, you're building your dice pools and getting the right items. And that's have. fun. It's super fun. <laughs> yeah. But, like, just... I mean, you you had the... What, what did you have in Zombicide? You had the one character with the... Yeah, with the, the thunder axe or something. Yeah, the dwarven axe. I got to roll six dice every time I attacked, and if if I rolled anything, any fives, I would mow down a zombie for each five plus I rolled, and it was awesome. Right, he was just, just chucking dice. He just got, moved his character into a spot and was rolling handfuls of these days six and yelling and yeah. being like, "Give me more, more <laughs> heads! Zombies are dying! Yes, fives!" And like. There's something wonderfully simply, yeah. like, just joyous about that. And the fact that you can roll a handful of dice and at a glance know exactly that you've, you've succeeded and or failed, it feels great. Yeah. Every time you roll the dice in Massive Darkness, you, it, it's, not this, it's not the conclusion to a moment. It is the, okay, now we're going to spend 30 seconds figuring out, well, that blocks this, and this blocks this, and I'm going to spend this for this, and I'm going to activate this ability. To re-roll. So this dice no longer lot. counts. Yeah. And yeah. you don't get the release of having rolled a bunch of dice, and like you, there's not yeah. the you're not playing craps and rolling dice. I'm like sevens. Yeah. yeah, you're 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 playing poker, and you don't get to see the last card in the river until after you've rolled the dice and talked about it for thirty seconds. Yeah, yeah, that's a that's a very fair point. Now, my so my question to you, something I've, I've been considering is, do you feel like which one do you feel like has has a larger climax mm. to the end of the game? Or do you feel like they both could be the same level of climax and the same level of, of anticlimactic? So I don't think any of the endings for Massive Darkness so far in the in the scenarios we've played yeah. have felt like we have had like I have not had catharsis. It's felt like we've won before we got to the end. Yeah. Right? We saw the path, we designed it, we made sure it was clear of bad guys, we made sure we all were like potioned up and and jacked and we walked into the last room and won yeah right and 
so I, I don't think that the Massive Darkness has really paid off at all in that respect. The one caveat I will withhold, because we haven't played one of the big... Oh, the big boss. The big, like, boss, Battle, yeah. like, right? That's true. Um, there and, are some scenarios that have a specific, like, dashboard for a boss, and the boss has different rules. Mm -hmm. We've only played scenarios that have mobs and roaming monsters, which are kind of like the two tiers below it. Mm -hmm. That's a very that's a very fair right. point. And, yeah. and it, as far as the Diablo comparison goes... Mm -hmm. Uh, clearing clearing a map in early Diablo does not feel super yeah, super fair. super cathartic. Beating like a chapter boss tends to feel pretty cathartic, right? And it's tougher, right. and that makes it more cathartic, right? Yeah, you've been building up to it for a long time. In Zombicide, I all, like I don't always get a big cathartic ending, but I often do. You often do, yeah. Cool, um, especially because characters tend to get so strong by the end. If you, if, like, if, depending on how you've been playing it, I have, like, I make a lot of jokes about walking up a street and killing all the zombies. Yeah. But a lot of the time that happens at the end of Zombicide. Right. I've played, I went and taught some friends of mine who had never played Zombicide how to play Zombicide. We played a game, we put together a random map, and the, we got toasted for, like, half the game. And I kept trying to, like, show people how to play the rules, so I would, like, run into a room to explain how to roll dice or whatever, and I'd get right. killed. And so we'd been... we'd been. Oh, yeah, that's the reason you ran into the rules. Whoa! The room. Okay. <laughs> anyway, we'd been getting slaughtered for the whole time, but the last the last couple turns... You do that in every game. The, okay, fine. I wish Brandon was, was down here so he could back me up. <laughs> I'm trying to make a point. Okay, okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> anyway... We we've been we've been sort of getting brutalized for the whole game, and at the last turn or last couple turns, everyone is sort of like hit level like four or something. Yeah, they'd gotten their like next ability. Everyone had, we had found the blue items from the basements, and our last objective was just to get out. And there was just a big street of zombies, and for two turns we just Most fought times. our way through the zombies cool. square by square. And by the time and we leveled up like twice as we moved down that street. Just because there were so many zombies. And we yeah. got to the exit having killed so many zombies. And I think another thing that makes it so... We sort of saw it in the, our game today. Yeah. Where zombies will come in from all sides of the board. And you'll kind of avoid them at the beginning of the game. Because you can't deal with the numbers of them. But as you kite them around the board, the, the swarms will get larger and larger. Until towards the end of the game when the swarm almost seems too big. You can't even fit it on the board you tend to get the tools to deal with the swarm. Yeah. And all of a sudden, this threat, which has been present, this horde, which has its own identity on the board for the entire game, goes from being an obstacle to a challenge to the victory celebration. Right? Right. And, like, that feels so good. Right? None of the monsters in Massive Darkness live on the board long enough yeah. for them to... to, to to feel good to kill. Yeah, because you have to deal with them. Right? Yeah. Like, and if you don't deal with them, if if they get to that to that level, you're done, mm -hmm. right? Like, no way do I ever want two roaming monsters on the board at one time. We, you'd be dead. Right. You'd just be dead. And I, I think this also goes back to the strength of zombies being the main theme of Zombicide, mm -hmm. is that, like, those first zombies that came onto the board might not have survived turn one, but it feels like the zombies that are on the board at the end of the game are part of that same like creature, <laughs> right? Yeah, like you've been fighting by that. you've been fighting this entity that is the zombies the entire time and your victory at the end is a victory over the thing that has been tormenting you. Um, and so I feel I always I usually feel very satisfied at the end of a yeah. zombie side game. Well that's 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 great. That's great to hear. That's also interesting because I I feel very similar to you but but you've also played more zombie side than mm, me yeah. or, or more frequently because uh, I don't, I don't remember the last time we played Z Zombicide. It's been a while for me, at least, that I played. Because, well, because you own they all, all my all my times playing Zombicide sort of blend together yeah. a little bit. But but I know for this specific scenario, it didn't feel no. like a classic Zombicide. It almost felt a little bit more like a Massive Darkness, where you had to maneuver your way around the map a little bit more stealthily. Um, because we well, we played half, and we technically like we lost. Because we made a mistake because we got overrun, and then we're like, no, okay. No, 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 Chris. We did not make a mistake. <laughs> I, being a dunce, a fool, an over-eager simpleton, moved a character across the whole map all by himself, 
and I opened a building, which I shouldn't have opened, <laughs> spawning lots of archers on myself who just <laughs> shot me so full of arrows. And well, the whole time, Chris, I seem to remember you saying, no, don't do that, Zach. Don't go over there alone. No. Well, you could go over there, but don't open the door. Don't open the door. You've opened the door. Can you escape? You can't escape, can you? <laughs> well, no, to be fair, I, I've played games with you before, and I should not have given you one of my actions with my yeah, leader's no, ability. That's true. If I hadn't given you that action, you wouldn't have fallen into that temptation, and I, I really take it upon myself. <laughs> I, I, I take full responsibility. But anyway, yes, we lost that game of Zombicide halfway through. But we were enjoying it so much that we were just like, ah, okay, let's... So we lost, like, we counted as loss. And, and then we rewinded it we, a turn. We rewinded, rewinded a turn so we could we could play again. Okay, we don't make that decision, and we just kept playing. And mm -hmm. it was it was great. I'm glad we did that, Me because, too. like... I was having a lot of fun in that scenario, and I didn't want to just like end the scenario. You know what I mean? Um, so, but it felt it felt a little bit more uh, st not strategic, right? But more more tactical than yeah. than it's still tactical. You can still have to maneuver, but like you don't have to wrangle the horde as much as you. I feel like you have to be aware of the positioning of here because one thing we didn't talk about in Massive Darkness is the shadow mechanic. Um, you, you did, or we might have. I forget. Uh, but you, if you're in the dark, you get to roll an additional dice, and mm. it's a really powerful dice. That's yeah. that's it. That's that's there's a the mechanic. You're the light bringer, so naturally you're you're better in the dark. And maybe half the squares on the board are dark and half yeah. are light, so you are predisposed to trying to make your fights happen in the dark squares. Yeah. yeah. So you're just trying to like move. So that's that's another element to the maneuvering, as well as trying to manipulate where they are so they don't get too close to you because too many attacking you at once means like you're dead. Yeah. Um, yeah, because I so so in that particular scenario that we did today was a little bit more creepy crawly. It probably didn't highlight the strengths of Zombicide as well as a different scenario might have. Yeah. But that's that's why I wanted to ask you that question in mm -hmm. terms because it also felt like an anticlimactic ending to me mm. today because it felt it felt yeah. like all the endings that we've experienced with Master Dragon is like oh yeah and we went. Like, you don't actually have to play the last couple of turns because we move to the thing and we, we get the objective, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and that was ours too. Like, we had the, we had a straight shot at the exit because the exit was cordoned yeah. off. Yeah. Um, but I, I think, mean, we did, I think... We did lose halfway through. So I, it's hard to say that. Yeah. I would also, just because we're, we're do, comparing these, yep. is also, um, we've told like one exciting story about a game, like a, a thing that happened in our game and it led to our loss. Right. Have, have any exciting stories happened to you that you can recall? For Massive Darkness? For Massive Darkness. It's not necessarily... I mean, I was very excited all game today mm. because it's it's funny because I was playing basically the Berserker in both games. Right. Uh, but I, when you talked about the... the You like the dice more in Zombicide, I like the dice more a lot more in Massive Darkness. I like that combining of the different colors... And it's I I got this power that let me add an orange dice. And when you're rolling two orange dice and a shadow dice, you feel like the friggin' king of the world. Yeah. So as the berserker, I felt so good just jumping into the middle of of a whole mob where usually I'm so afraid of them and they've like cut me down when I'm playing like a squishier character. But I had so much health that I could just walk in there and I wanted to take wounds because it gave me more powers to do. And so like I, I didn't care what happened to me. I could just jump in, and like that felt really exciting. Mm -hmm. And and I wasn't even that excited to play the, play the Berserker. I was thinking, oh, okay, I, I haven't played this character yet. I haven't seen this character yet. And uh, it seems a little straightforward compared to the other characters. Like the Rogue has a whole bag building element to it. The the Necromancer's got you know the pet class getting all the monsters and resurrecting people. I'm like yeah the the Berserker he just punches himself and that's it right. Mm -hmm. But but it felt so good to like roll those dice and to build up to those dice. But again it still takes that toll of. You're right. It's you don't roll and you don't see what happens unless like you roll a whole bunch of swords or you don't because they're custom. They're custom dice. They're not mm -hmm. like they have different attacks on each side. But like so, I I felt really good rolling rolling all the dice as the berserker. But uh, it's more it's more the development of the character that mm -hmm. I really enjoy and that sort of progression rather than the individual like triumphant moments that take that I feel are more present in Zombicide. I, think I, right. I completely agree. Yeah. I think like the, the moment to moment decisions you're making in Massive Darkness much more exciting and interesting. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't, I don't, as a story engine, I don't, I don't, I don't think they're compared. They don't make the same story. Yeah. 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 yeah that's fair. Yeah. 
Yeah. So we thought we could fit this into a half an hour. But we couldn't. It's... The cameras died twice. <laughs> the cameras died twice. It's already gone on as long, I think, as our nemesis discussion. Well, we are we like talking about games, right? Guys, so do you. That's why we're If we're, we're talking too much, leave many comments. <laughs> also like and subscribe. Yeah. But leave many comments <laughs> explaining to us how we've taken too long. We'll try to be shorter the next time. And if you if you did like the, num the length that this yeah. is going, then... Also comment and tell us that. That's true, yeah. Yeah. Because we'll go on. Like, we, that's, that's we talk, also... We talk just until we, we gets too late and he has to go home. That's pretty much he, it, He usually yeah. comes over. <laughs> and now we're doing it in front of a camera and I, we're being told how long we talk for. <laughs> yeah, there's an actual timer on it. <laughs> um, so, okay. So, but I feel like we've covered most of the differences and, and the highs of both of these. Right. Zach, is there anything else that you I think feel that like we missed? I think a thing to t touch on, just because... Why not? We're talking about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Both games with tons of minis in them. Right. People out there who might be thinking about getting one or the other might be interested in those minis. Mm, yeah. What do you What do you think of them as tools that help gameplay? That's a That's a great point, and I I I'm immediately jumping to the only reason your Zombicide is as playable as it is is because Zach has painted them and because Zach has color coded them. I was remarking this as we were playing. Yep. And I, I wanted to prompt yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, to bring that up. I think, yeah, that's for sure. It's so important because it's so important to know, to be able to see the type of zombie. There's like four kinds of zombies. Yeah. And so many end up in a square together. Yeah. You need to know, are those fatties? Are those runners? Are those walkers? Yeah. And I've color coded them so they're beige, blue, and red. The and bases, just the bases. Just the and bases. He, and he's, well, Zach's also so talented in terms of being a painter. Uh, like he's highlighted, he's highlighted the colors on all of them. So even even the fatties are all gross, but they all have like blue clothing, right? Like, and then all, everyone else has the runners have like the more red and like the red streaks on them. And yeah, it's it's it makes it so readable a game at a glance. At a glance, I think I would be frustrated if if I wasn't playing with your copy for sure. I I agree. I also haven't played it. Without it being painted, so I don't know. That's fair. Yeah. Um, I think the the zombies in Zombicide are definitely designed to have like a distinctive silhouette. Yeah. So that the fatties are 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 have a distinctive silhouette. But when they're in a giant blob on a square, those silhouettes blend together. Especially when you have it like ten or twelve in a square, and that's not uncommon. Not right? uncommon at yeah. all. I, I keep throwing out giant numbers of zombies, and like a tiny bit of that might be hyperbole. <laughs> Hyperbole? Yeah. Hyper hyperbole. <laughs> yeah. Good old hyperbole. Hyperbolic. Hyper hyperbole. Yeah, a nice big spoonful from your hyperbole. Um, That's but what we're on, we're on our hyperbole. Uh, an absolute <laughs> crap ton of zombies will come out of this box and yeah. end up on your board, even yeah. if you don't have any of the expansions. Yeah, yeah. Um, but at the same regard, I want... This is the reason why I want to do just a basic wash on all the mobs and then highlight the mob leader for with, massive dark for massive darkness with a, a little bit of like more distinct characteristics we're we're gonna we're gonna get together and do that and i'll probably film film some and talk about it because you can teach me how to do it because i'm still like so scared <laughs> even just like the very most basic thing i'm just like ah, i don't know how <laughs> i know it's just poor literally pour paint on it just prime it put paint on it and that's it's, it it's not hard at all yeah i'll i'll I'll, uh, maybe I'll make a little video and yeah, I'll, I'll yeah. just explain how to do it. Yeah. Cool. I'll film. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but uh, I want to do that for Massive Darkness to make it easier to distinguish when the two mobs do meet right. on, a, on, a, on a thing. But also their sculpts, I think, are unique enough that it's not that hard to sort them out. Mm -hmm. You know? And especially if you actually are using with the right cards, it's it's fairly easy to distinguish between them. It's it's still something that I I am considering for ease of play because it's a bit annoying when a similar sculpt is on the same tile and you're like, oh, which one do I remove? And if you remove the wrong one from a mob, it yeah. it, it actually does affect gameplay. Whereas if you were to remove the wrong zombie, well, there's still so many, it wouldn't really matter. Yeah, I think I think between the two games, if you were if you were to say like. Could you make like a version of these games without the minis and just with tokens or something? I think you would have a harder time with Zombicide than with that. I think I'm also probably tainted a little bit by the fact that we've been using just the, the models interchangeably. Yeah, yeah. But it, it it has never felt important that the models had different sculpts when we put them on the board. I with think Massive be, because they're they're generally more spread out. Yeah. I mean, I feel like if when they're clumped together, that I, might be. I a remember big being, difference. Yeah. Being a bit annoyed, like not annoyed, but. 
but having to deal with them just you have to take a couple extra seconds to figure it out but mm -hmm. uh yeah no i think that's i think that's a great point and and a really good point about zombicide side the more you, more you go even if you just get something to color code the bases yeah if you're not a paint like i'm not a painter i'm horrible at painting but but even just taking a, a little color to put on the base people use sharpies sometimes right yeah to even just mark it right yeah, yeah. um probably will be helpful for for just for ease of play, if you've never played either of these games before. Quite possibly you've played one of them, right? And probably. You've probably played Zombicide and you're seeing how Massive Darkness 2 compares because that's the that's the newer one. But, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I guess another question to pose to you. Um, oh, I've just died. My brain is just shut down. No oh. more questions. <laughs> Wait, no, no. All right, it's back. It's back. Both games with uh, from Come On, big yep. production value games, yep. tons of expansions. Yeah. Uh, do you think the do you think the component quality is is something to talk about with either of them, or are there any necessary expansions? You think because you've also gotten this with yeah, I got a bunch of Kickstarter stuff. Yeah. Uh, honestly, I think the base game is fine for both. Me too. Base game is fine for both. That's a great thing to to bring up. I, I for Massive Darkness for sure. The six classes feel very different. You got enough gameplay in there to keep you going. Yeah, for a while. Yeah. And then if you if you're really enjoying it and you want to try out the new classes, yeah, pick up whichever ones you, you think look cool. They're they're literally all cool. I, I think when we play this more, we should do a, like a ranking of the classes. I think that would be fun to to, to like once we've each played them all mm -hmm. to to make a list and rank them and then we'll go back and forth and see yeah. see where we put them, what our favorite ones are. Because right now Literally everything's at a time. The most recent one I've played has been consistently my favorite one. Yeah, right. Uh, every time I play a new one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and and <laughs> the, the novelty of it is great every single time. Yeah. Um, and every single time I'm like, oh, I gotta come back here and do a completely different build. Yeah. And I have never done so because I want to see the new thing, the yeah. new shiny thing. Yeah. Um, I guess. Oh, am I brain dying again? I keep thinking of things while you're talking. And That's I'm like, fair. Put it in the file folder. Yeah. Um, I talk too long. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, Black Plague, again, like, the, the thing about Zombicide that makes you feel like you want to get all the expansions for it is all the heroes. You want to have that stack for, for the variability, especially because you play with six heroes every time. I think the feeling will be, because you only get, like, six heroes in the base game. Right. Well, I... I'm gonna I'm gonna challenge you there, okay? Because I've gotten all the expansions, mm -hmm. and I've gotten tons of heroes with them. That's true. And th I felt like those are the inconsequential bit. The thing that makes yeah. me want to get all the expansions are a new kind of zombie to shuffle in, because that feels like it has such a bigger impact on the game. Oh, a new boss with a new set of rules and a cool sculpt that goes with it, huge impact on the game. Oh, a bunch of new tiles I can shuffle in when I make a random yeah. map, big. I've never felt. So, like, I've got, a, I've painted most of this. Of my room, the only thing I haven't finished painting are, like, six or seven heroes. Right. Because I also, I don't feel as much need to get those painted in, in the box as I did to get all of the zombies in the box. Yeah. Um, so, maybe we feel completely different about that. But that's, I would say heroes stand out as the big thing in Massive Darkness. Mm. I would say the, the the zombies and the bosses stand out for Zombicide to me. Oh, I I agree with you now that you've you having said that, but I think for me, looking at it from the outside, mm -hmm. I like my perception is oh I need all those extra heroes because that's what all the Kickstarter stretch goals really are. But adding I think a ton of adding heroes. a ton of heroes because you just get a sculpt, you get a card, and you're like oh that card it's a variability, it's the different characters, it feels so different. But I I I agree that like. You could just print out the different abilities and just pick a different ability to start with. I mean, because that's all it is. Shorting that even, yeah. all of the possibility, of, like yeah. in the base game for Zombicide Green Horde or Black Plague, in the back of the rule book, there's a list of all of the traits that heroes can get. And no matter what expansions you've looked at with different heroes in them, they just have different combinations of those traits. So just pick one. You've got you've got <laughs> yeah. nothing with a hero comes that is going to change your gameplay yeah. other than yeah. The way it looks. Yeah, for sure. Right? And the the specific combination of traits. Yeah. And you essentially have it all in the box when you get the base game. Yeah. And unless you're a completionist like me who wanted to paint a bunch of zombies, I don't know if you need everything. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good call. Yeah, both base games, which is great. It is great. 
and I just, I don't know if you, because I just put out a video about expansions and talking about like the concept of needing expansions and expansions being essential, but like the expansions here give you more of what you like. Mm -hmm. And so the full that you're, but you're still able to fully explore what you do like before getting to them, I feel. Yeah. Which would be good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So here's the, but here's the real question. We've, we've talked about them enough. Which game is the better game, Zach? Which game do you like more? I've I've struggled with this question since we played Massive Darkness. I know. Because I've had such an inferiority complex. And <laughs> when I got into Zombicide, it was long after the Kickstarter had come out. Yeah. And I got it, and I loved it. And then I was like, there was some kind of Kickstarter for this, wasn't there? And then I was like, oh, there was. And there was a billion add-ons. Oh, there was another Kickstarter for it where it turned it into Green Horde, and it had a billion add-ons. <laughs> and I went on, I, I I put on my like my huntsman's cap, yeah, and I went out and hunted for as much as I could find <laughs> for as little as I for I found most of it, most of the stuff I was most interested in mm -hmm. anyway. Um, and I collected it all, and I painted it all, and put it on my shelf in a place of pride. And then this usurper, this <laughs> this. This, 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 oh, oh, this, this descendant of a distant line of my family has come to take my throne from me. And I felt, I like, honestly, you, as soon as you said, oh, I think this defeats Zombicide, my heart like broke inside. I was like, oh, was this wasted time? Was this wasted money? Was this wasted interest in this toy that I, I've collected and spent so much like of my energy and like, no, no. I, I I like Zombicide more. I think. Yeah. I like tonight. I'm wrong. Cool. Put my stamp in the ground, and it's, I'm trying to divide that from my like my pre-existing loyalty. That's fair. But uh, I think, given the choice between owning the two, I would take Zombicide. But I'm lucky that you already own. Zombicide. I already own Zombicide, and and my good friend has Massive Darkness. I play either either anytime he wants to. Yeah. I mean, I I would play either for sure. I'm really really glad that we played Zombicide today mm -hmm. because it makes me realize that it can exist and I don't have to dump it into the fire where it belongs. Um or at least not yet. Mm -hmm. But but uh for for me it's it is tough. It is tough. They both really have uh, they both really have a lot of positives to them and and that was highlighted again by playing it today. It's it's it's, I, I think of Massive Darkness and I think of the energy that it takes to, to just kind of go through it. And mm -hmm. like it, the fiddly nature that I've managed to reduce so significantly by the insert. Your insert, I have no doubt, has right? turned what could have been a, 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 a nightmare. Horrible slog because there's so many tokens and, and managing all that. To like if you're, gonna, if you're ever getting this game... Either take the time to do an insert or, or get a separate token tray that you just keep outside the box because you need something You're going to, be using to, so to sort them all. They keep going back and forth, back and forth. It's so important mm -hmm. for just for the, ease, for the ease of play because it still is fiddly even with that because there's so much back and forth. And we even stopped doing some of the upkeep just because it's, it's annoying. And so it kind of like shifts the balance a little bit mm -hmm. in terms of us getting better items. But it, I ran out of like table space in front of me to yeah. put all the tokens to mark my health, my mana, yeah. my bombs, my gadgets, my items. My like I was taking up so much the table just yeah. managing all of it, all of this junk. Yeah, I mean, it was it was I had gadgets. It was it was trinkets. It was it junk. Was trinkets. It was, it was literally was junk. junk. <laughs> um, for for me, it is the classes and the difference of the classes that puts Massive Darkness ahead of Zombicide for me. Mm -hmm. um, but but they're both a lot of fun, and yeah, I I, I definitely like Massive Darkness more because specifically because of the classes. Mm -hmm. And second secondly, the loot. But I'd be fine with with random loot if I still got the sort of class progression and the and the levels and the choosing of how to specialize. That's what I. That's what really makes this shine for me. Um, yeah, that, that's what I really like about this one, and, and, and makes me excited to play it and to dive back into it. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas Zombicide, I, I, I am less interested in the characters, even though I, I felt like 
that's the most important or oh, the variability, you know what I mean? Like yeah. it's so, it's so dumb, but like, that's, that's a perception that I know I have had. Mm -hmm. I'm like, yeah, you gotta get the Kickstarter. Cause look at all those exclusive characters that like, Oh, you only have six characters. How are you going to, how are you going to mix and match those? It doesn't matter. Right. Like the, yeah. the, the system does that sort of mixing matching for you. But yeah. So massive darkness is, yeah. is, is, is the one is my favorite. Mm -hmm. Um, trying to think is there anything else to talk about i don't think so i think we've talked long enough zach i think so uh thank you everyone for sticking around hopefully that was an enjoyable to listen to hopefully it gave you a good sense of the differences between the two uh, i am thrilled that we both that both copies have found themselves into their rightful collections mm -hmm. of the enjoyment of both um yeah i i i i think both of these are great great games you can't go wrong with either of them they're both on the higher price point but you get a lot of plastic in it so just make sure you're really into that sort of dice rolling fun in both cases right and that dungeon crawling aspect if you if you're interested in picking it up yeah um i guess my, my final closing thoughts on zombicide mm -hmm. is there's a million versions of zombicide out there there's like space and and modern day and past day. The and Western one looked pretty fun. Western. That was the recent Kickstarter. And I think, so. I think, uh, um, I guess an, another little black mark I'll put on Zombicide reluctantly is if 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 it it can be so theme agnostic that it might be a, a mark against it as well. I couldn't imagine you retheming Massive Darkness and it working as well as it does. Right, I think I think it, it being the dungeon crawler with with like Dungeons and Dragons and class stuff. classes and stuff. Right, it it works so well. I think I think the the theme in Zombicide is just zombies. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. I, but I I th I'm honest, I don't know if that's a that's a that's a negative against it. And but honestly, I'm counter to your point. I feel like the theme is a lot stronger in Zombicide, whereas this you're just kind of, it's kind of like a random dungeon crawler. You're running around. Oh, and in the, in the end, we learn to love each other's game. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. What a touching end to the video. Um, anyway, that's it. Thanks so much for watching. My name's Chris George. I'm Zach. Uh, you don't have a catchphrase? I don't, yes. I don't have a catchphrase. Watch out for those handy snakes. I got long fingers and I'll get right up into everything. And you gotta watch. That's that's why most snakes don't have fingers. I'll put a I'll put a picture well, on the it. Finger, the finger I'll snakes? put a picture Good. of the finger snakes. Good. The finger snakes were awful. Different than the finger lakes. What? There's a place called the finger lakes. It's where Jim Carrey's cameo in the office was. I'll, I'll put, put a picture of that up for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> you were going to edit this? Oh, thank God. No, I'm not. You're going to do it. I got so much. <laughs> All right. <laughs> See you in the next one.